So 63% of American households are living paycheck to paycheck, which is up 48% prior to the pandemic. 46% of Americans don't even have $400 in their bank account for emergency expenses. And nearly half of Americans aged 55 plus have no retirement savings. 42% of people have accumulated over $10,000 of debt since the pandemic. This is a very widespread issue that we have here. And what are the problems in our financial world? They actually are a stack. For me, um, it is definitely a failing financial system. So this traditional financial system has so many middle layers that are incentivized to take their cut, really at the expense of you, at the expense of us. We actually call this the financial matrix, and a lot of us are conditioned to live within this financial matrix. And there's a whole video that we've, uh, we've built uh, around that that you can get a link on there. Monetary manipulation, the rich are getting richer, the middle class is shrinking, more people are struggling financially in abundant countries than ever before. Who's, who's heard of the Federal Reserve? Keep your hand up if you believe it's a government organisation. There's a couple of hands up, don't be ashamed because it sounds like a government organisation. It's not basically formed by uh, a group of very wealthy people, about seven people representing wealthy families um, in America and banks about 110 years ago. They came together to form legislation to protect their own monetary interests pretty much at the expense of, of everyone else. A lack of financial education. So I don't know about you guys, but I didn't learn finances at school. I had to learn myself in my late 20s and early 30s. So this really results in the majority of the population unable to employ strategies to build wealth and pretty much just getting stuck in this endless rat race environment, which is largely around consumerism. There's a very thought-provoking video in there as well. So part of that, when the Federal Reserve came in, ever since then, the US dollar has lost 95% of its purchasing power since it came into, into effect. And it largely started to go really downhill uh, from 1971 when the US dollar was removed from the gold standard. Probably the worst thing that's ever happened to fiat currency. And then you had all the quantitative easing, money printing that started in 2008 with the global financial crisis and really, really ramped up in 2020. To the point where around 50% of the US dollar circulation has been printed pretty much out of thin air since 2020. So when you hear this rubbish about inflation is from CPI and all the rest of it, we're being brainwashed. And inflation is, is caused by the expansion of the money supply. It's been redefined a number of times to, to pull the wool over our eyes. And the central banks and the powers that be, they want this inflation because it reduces their debt burden. Um, and you won't hear about any of this in, in traditional media or whatever because the same people who own the media are the same people that set all these agendas. And the, inf the effect of inflation is here. It's well and truly here. Here are some stats, used cars up 41%, gasoline up 38%, food is up 8.6%. Um, I mean, if you look at the CPI in America, it's about 9.1% or something like that. In Australia, it's about six. The way they measure that um, is rigged, basically, so it's really close to the 15 to 20%. So unless you're earning an extra 15, 20, 30% every year than you were a couple of years ago, you're actually losing, um, losing track to inflation. Your purchasing power is going down. So you better be increasing your earning capacity and or investing your money intelligently. Otherwise, your money is being eroded away. If you left your money under the under, the, under your bed, within uh, five years, you've basically lost half your wealth. So uh, it's a very big problem, even though they're not telling you so. Uh, businesses are also suffering from inflation. So this is a survey from Gartner.com uh, where CFOs were um, asked, what is the biggest risk posed by input price inflation? That's just the price of all the goods that a business needs to operate going up and 74% of them said lower profitability. So those who run businesses know how critical profitability is, and if you're gonna have lower profitability, you're gonna have a problem. Meanwhile, the banks are still collecting their fees and never really stopped. So during the pandemic, over 12.4 billion in overdraft fees was collected. So while people were struggling, they were raking in their money. I don't know if anyone's heard of the fractional reserve banking system. Some would, some won't. Um, you probably don't know that they can lend basically up to 10 times the amount of money that gets deposited in there, earn interest rates up to 18% and pay you less than 1%. It's a rigged system and all of us are losing out.